Hi, this is Mary Murata. I'm with the Lemonster Historical Society. Today I'm here with filming. Ron Gerard is filming an interview with us. Ron Gerard is with the Historic Lemonster Historical Commission. We're here today with Claude Chapdelaine, who is the owner of Cato. Cato and uh, the Union Product Division also. And Union Products was the company that first started making the pink plastic flamingos. The design was, came up in uh, 1957 was the first pink plastic flamingo and Cato Products is still making them today. And proud to be saying it, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Everybody loves the pink flamingo. <laughs> and uh, so, Claude, um, when did the Union Products stopped making the pink plastic flamingos. They went out of business uh, approximately 10 years ago. I'm not sure of the exact date, but it was approximately 10 years ago. And uh, they had financial difficulties and they had to close the factory. And a, a company in New York uh, who was in a plastic business wanted to get into the blow molding business and they approached Union Products and bought all of their rights, all of their products and nice. tooling and equipment and moved it to Rome, New York. Okay, and was Cato already a manufacturing company at the time? Yes, uh, I've been in the blow molding business for the last 20 years. Uh, my parents started, actually started the business, but we were strictly mold makers. We were mo making molds for the plastic industry in Lemonstown. Oh. And uh, 20 years ago, I moved the business here to Fitchburg because I needed more room. I wanted to expand into molding plastic products. I and, which I did, and uh, that's why I ended up uh, by purchasing uh, the Union Product Company from the people in New York about eight years ago. Uh, as I said, they had bought it and moved it to New York, but the owner passed away, and his family did not wish to continue in the plastic business. And we had a connection to them. We were doing some molding for them to help them out, and uh, we offered to buy buy it all back. And uh, they agreed to that, so we did, and we moved it back here to Fitchburg wow. approximately 10 years ago. That's great. Now, we were talking about uh, pink plastic flamingos, and we're estimating how many maybe we sell a year. Oh, but... we probably sell in the neighborhood of 50,000 of them a year. Oh, my. Uh, and you make different kinds of flamingos besides pink ones. Uh, well, we make different colors. We make a blue one, which they call the blue mingo, and uh, we also <laughs> make a purple one kind of on special order. Their purple, for some reason, is a popular color with a lot of college uh, people. Are, are, oddly enough, tonight at the City Hall is painted down purple tonight. So, yes, yeah. Yeah. it's an appropriate yeah. color so to we be do, talking uh, about. <laughs> we do make them in purple also. And black? Uh, we make, well, we make a black <laughs> flamingo, but we uh, refer to it as a zombie flamingo because we, we kind of changed the head somewhat, the neck and the, neck, the head and the neck area of it. Oh, okay. uh, we added fangs to it to oh, really? uh, make it uh, a little more Halloweenish, shall we say? And we added some veins to the neck, so it gives it a little bit of a different look. But it's basically the same bird. That's interesting. So you must have graphics designers or sculptors or someone. Who well, we have a sculptor on staff. Uh, matter of fact, his name is Phil Cody, who many people in Lumsden oh, may know. We're the, familiar uh, with Phil Cody's work. Phil Cody, you know. <laughs> yes, uh, Phil Cody has been working Phil. together with me. For the last 50 years. Wow. Well, uh, that's we've wonderful. We've been together since we were young people. He, he was previously married to my sister, but is now divorced. But uh, that's how the connection is there. That's and he still, still works with me on a part-time basis. Uh, he works a few hours a week and just to keep his hand in it. And he, he makes a lot of models for us and does all our modeling work. 
That's great. I think your designs have a lot of personality in their faces, yeah. in their activity, and that must come from that kind of care and, and craftsmanship. Well, he's, he's very good at what he does. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Now, the Cato Company is comes from... It, from the website says there were three companies originally that got merged together? Well, not exactly. Okay. Uh, the original name from the company when my parents started was the Chapdelaine Tool Company. Ah. Uh, and like I said, we, they just, we just made molds. And I took it over about 30 years ago. My dad retired and I kept the company going in Lum and stuff. Uh, but we were just making molds, and uh, then I decided I wanted to get into the molding business, so I moved here to Fitchburg because I found this building that suited my needs here, and uh, I changed the name at that time. Uh, there were personal reasons for changing the name, mm -hmm. uh, but I came up with the name Cato because uh, that was my grandfather's nickname. Uh, we are from Quebec originally, yep. mm -hmm. whole family. And uh, in Canada, my, my grandfather was named that, known as Kadu. And I kind of changed it around a little bit, the spelling, uh, just because I was trying to come up with a new name. So I decided, well, I'll name it after my grandfather. That's and wonderful. that's how the name came about, really. That's There's great. There's a history behind the name Kato, but uh, it's a long history. But uh, mm -hmm. that's how the name came about. And then we, like I said, we bought the Union Product name. And we also bought another company, the Fantasia Marketing Company, which makes a lot of novelty type stuff. And we use, we use all three names in our sales efforts. Oh, okay, so go ahead. So that's why it, you see it appear on, online and in advertising and whatever. So Union Products still exists in a way. That's correct. A, that's correct. As a we bought, of the we bought the rights to the name and the rights to the name of Don Featherstone, which is a Don Featherstone flamingo, mm -hmm. and he's the one that designed basically, as far as I know, just about all of the lawn and garden products that Union Product used to make. Did he? Yeah. Do you make any other Union products? Oh yes, we traditional. Well, we make the a, we make a lot of their planners. Uh, you know, you can see them on a shelf over there. We get a oh, lamb yeah. planner and a cow planner and. Uh, there are there are various watering cans that uh, we may still make that uh, they designed and started. Yep. Now I, now I can remember um, back in the uh, '60s when my grandfather had the house on Seventh Street. He had some uh, Union products, uh, little ducks and chickens and stuff like right. that on the uh, front lawn. And I believe you might have made those at Union Products, correct? We we don't have the moles for some of the products. Uh, when the, when a the company closed, a lot of the moles uh, they went to scrap. Okay. And because they were cleaning out the factory before the the gentleman in New York bought it, yeah. So a lot of it went away. We still make a lot of their Christmas products, the uh -huh. snowman and the yeah. Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus, and uh, uh, they had some gingerbread people and gingerbread trees. I, I can remember yeah. uh, doing many 12-hour shifts at the old right. Union Products plant, yeah, making that, yeah. Yeah, and we a make a lot of the Halloween stuff, like the cauldrons were a big item for them. Uh, we still make all the cauldrons that they yeah. used to make. I read they're special because they don't have a hole in it. So That's correct. It can uh, be used there, to... There are competitors, but the competitors all have a hole in the bottom, and that's primarily the way <laughs> way it's manufactured. Yep. We manufacture it a little different. It's a little more work to do it the way we do, but there's no hole in the bottom. And the buyers, as far as at the retail level, they like that, that there's no hole. It could be used for different things. Yeah, a lot of the bigger cauldrons they use for apple dunking and that sort of thing. Oh, apple dunking! And, I love uh, that. So you can't have a hole in the bottom of it, otherwise you can't put water in it. <laughs> nope. <laughs> so you must use an awful lot of, um, you call it resin. Plastic resin, yes. Plastic resin. Yes. For uh, um, for all your manufacturing. Oh yes, you go through hundreds of thousands of pounds a year. Where does it come from? Well, we buy through brokers. It's okay. primarily a lot of this uh, material is manufactured down in Louisiana and Texas. Okay. There are a lot of plastic manufacturing companies down there, mm -hmm. and uh, that manufacture the resin. We actually buy it through local brokers in the area, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, 
that's how it's yeah going. I used to work with I used to make the resin at uh, um, I think it was Gary Gary Gary, Gary, Gary Chemical but there was a place on Jack Gary Chemical used to make material, but they didn't make the kind of material that we used. There, there was one place I had made, I can't quite remember the name, but they used to make uh, the little pallets right off of Prospect Street. There's a place right in that area that does that. There, there is up, up uh, Prospect Street, but I don't believe they made... What we use is high-density polyethylene. Okay. It's, right. it's primarily a plastic that's used in all kinds of housewares, right, 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 general right, housewares right. and drinkware and picnic sets and that sort of thing. Same material as that. Uh, that's not manufactured in this area because okay. this is manufactured by the billions of pounds oh, a year wow. and it takes a very large corporation to manufacture and handle that. Uh, a lot of these smaller companies that manufacture plastic around the Lums Fitchburg area are specialty manufacturers, specialized materials. Uh, like for wire, that's uh, flame retardant materials. Mm -hmm. Gary Chemical that you mentioned, yeah. they they made a flame retardant uh, material for coating wires oh, okay. and that sort of thing, which okay. is done in much smaller batches. But that's more the history of the local manufacturing people yeah. versus what we buy. And your plastic, your resin comes in all these colors. Comes to you yeah. that way, or do you no? Color it the, comes yourself? in just a natural color which is what milk bottles look like. Okay. A milk bottle is made out of a plastic that's natural, no color added. We, add, we buy our material by uh, uh, truckloads and tanker trucks come in and put it into a silo and uh, we color it. We add the color to it ourselves. So are pla pink plastic flamingos a special color of pink? Well, yeah, everybody has their own colors. Uh, <laughs> uh, that was a kind of a trick question, it, I guess, it, huh? It, it is. It's a special color in, in a sense that uh, it has to be UV inhibited. Okay. Uh, so, because you put them outside and you don't want them to uh, lose their color. Yeah. So, we have it specially formulated for our use. It, I mean, it's basically a pink color, which a lot of people use various shades of mm -hmm. pinks. But ours is a, has a UV mm -hmm. inhibitor in it uh, yeah. because of... It's outside. Wow. Do you make any glow-in-the-dark things? No. No? No. We tried it, but we're not that proficient in it, so yeah. uh, we stay away from glow-in-the-dark. Yeah. What's the most unusual, do you think, the work, you know, job that you've had to produce in, out of plastic? you think uh, anything uh, weird? Not, not really. I've never yeah. made anything that you would consider weird. I will show you something that I just <laughs> recently made, and it's it's a mermaid. Oh, it is! And look at that. There's a hole in the bottom, uh -huh. and there's a hole on top, and it's for putting beer in to drink. <laughs> Popular with the college crowd. Can you do that again? It's a mermaid beer it's, mug. It's, it's, it's a mermaid. Here, let's see. This is cool. See it? We can see her. See, she's she's got a, her. This is her wonderful tail, and she's swimming upwards. And we fill this up. We fill it up with the Budweiser, right? There you go. And then we and then we drink it this way, like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty unusual That's kind design. Of the most you know, unusual thing uh, we've made. And then, can we put it on a table or it falls over? No, you have to drink it. You have to you drink it. You can't put it down. You have no, to drink it. You have to it. drink it all. It'll leave out. <laughs> but we make all kinds of products. As far as a company, we make all kinds of products here. I mean, we make what you see up there on the shelves. Uh, we make cushions for military application, for uniforms, for knee pads and elbow pads, that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, we make a, a number of uh, containers for the medical industry, for for blood products and that sort of thing. Uh, we make all kinds of things besides, you know, the Flamingo and, and their related products. Yeah. Do you, do you have your, uh, your own clean room up here? No, we don't have a clean room for anything. Uh, the medical application bottles that we make don't require a clean room. Uh, we're not set up for a clean room. Blow molding is kind of 
I want to say, uh, sort of messy. Uh, you, you, when you make a, a blow molded product, there's a lot of excess plastic all around the product that has to be trimmed off and it has to be ground up right away so we can reuse it. We grind it up into small flakes and we add it with the, with the new material. And that creates a lot of dust that, that we have to control. So we're not really set up for doing a clean room type of operation. All, all the uh, jobs you just described, um, I worked in a uh, clean room environment up by the Walmart in Lemister. They, they had a shop yeah. set up just for medical. Right. I worked there a number of months. And then I did work the, um, in, the, in the other place you had just mentioned, that, uh, oh, grind, grinding plastic when I was at E.B. Kingman. So that's what my primary job was yeah. back in the 70s, grinding, grinding uh, you know, material that was rejected. So, you know, you're bringing back a lot of memories to me. That, that ain't good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Claude, are you happy to be making something that Lemonster considers, like, I, yeah, identifiable? I, 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 I get a charge out of going into stores and seeing my products there. Um, we sell them to a lot of different retailers, like Ace Hardware is a large customer of ours. And uh, the True Value stores, uh, we sell a lot of products to them. So, you know, you, you go into those types of stores on a regular basis to buy stuff, and, and you see your products there. Yeah, it, it's fun to see. Yeah. yeah. Do people uh, come in with custom orders, like we were talking about the purple ones? Well, we do get requests for special colors, but unless they want to buy, you know, several thousand at a time, okay. <laughs> it's, too ex it's too expensive to set up a molding machine with a special color and all of that sort of thing, uh, so we don't get into it. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's a new customer that has their own, that own their own product, because we make products for people who own their own tooling to make the item, and, and they're willing to pay extra to get their own colors, uh, we do that. Isn't that but, interesting? Uh, it, it, there's a cost involved, and a lot of times uh, people don't want to pay the extra cost, yeah. so it doesn't happen. Well, it has to be efficient, it has to fit right. in their budget and everything. Do you get a lot of new ideas from, I mean, a lot of new clients, um, let's say every year, asking yeah. for different We have special people products. calling us on a regular basis. Uh, blow molding was a, a low and I want to say type of molding to make inexpensive products yeah. over the years and a lot of that has gone away. We're one of the few that, that do what we do. We get calls from all around the country from people who want novelty items such as this, you know, <laughs> Mermaid, uh, and they can't find anybody to make it because it's all overseas and a lot of people getting started with a new product don't necessarily want to go to overseas. Mm -hmm. So they find us online and they call us and they come in. And that happens, you know, on a regular basis. Several times a month people are coming in here with a, a new idea that they want to have made. Unfortunately for them, they don't understand up front what's involved and the yeah. expense that's involved. Mm -hmm. Because to make tooling and to get samples and, and all of that, it's a very expensive proposition. Yeah. And for individual people to have an idea like an, you know, an amateur inventor, mm -hmm. it's very difficult. Right. Uh, so we deal mostly with other companies that like in our medical containers, they approach us and we make it for them and the cost is not a big deal to them. They just want a product. Yeah. Whatever that cost is, they're willing to pay it. Yeah. So we get a lot of customers that way. Uh, we get a few individuals, like this mermaid, this was done by a young woman out of California. Uh, <laughs> she works in the plastic industry, she got this idea, and uh, she wanted it made, and it was, it was quite expensive, but she was willing to spend the money. Yeah. And we, we made a run of 5,000 pieces just recently. I don't know how it's going for her, we shipped them to her. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, hopefully it's going well. Well, we'll be looking for them on eBay. <laughs> so, yeah. so um, has been around. Kato's been around for. The business was started in 1957. 57. They're just the same year as the That's right. flamingo That's right. invention. And at, were you working for it like your whole life? My entire life, I started working uh, side by side with my dad in Lemister in a small shop. Uh, when I was 13 years old. Uh, I worked after school and then he showed me how to make molds and I worked with him for about 20 years 
20, 25 years side by side making just moles. Then he retired and I kept the company going in Lemister for a few more years and then I decided to uh, get into the molding end of it also and that's when I moved here to Fitchburg. Was that a big challenge for you to go from making molds to actually molding products? As no, a because man? I was involved with molders yeah. you know, for all my life actually when we made molds. Uh, I had to go into molding factories to uh, tweak molds, new molds that we made okay. that we sent to them. And uh, when they got them started, you'd go in and watch the mold get started up in case there were any issues with the mold. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes uh, the molds, while they were running, they'd have an issue and you could fix it right in the, the molding machine without taking the mold out and bringing it back to your shop. Mm -hmm. So I would do that. I had, uh, you know, more like my doctor's tool kit to fix molds. And I'd, yeah. you'd get a call and they'd say, well, we have this minor problem. Can you fix it right in the machine? So I would go there and fix it right in machines. That's and great. So I knew what the molding, the actual molding of the product was all about. Okay. Uh, I had seen it, I had worked with them very closely, so it wasn't a big deal for me to, to migrate into getting some molding machines and doing the molding. That's good, that's good. Do you, do you have a partner who's away today? I, I do, and he has the administration of the company primarily and the sales and for the company. And that's his name? His name is Bruce Zorozny. Okay, good. And we've Bruce been partners now for 17, 18 years. And he's in Vegas this week? He's in Las Vegas at the National Hardware Show because we do a lot of business with the hardware chains. Yeah, that's so. good. <laughs> and how many people do you employ? We have approximately 40 people. It varies. It goes up and down. It can be from 40 to 50 people mm -hmm. over three shifts. We operate around the clock, 24 hours a day, wow. five days a week, Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. And uh, that encompasses the three shifts. Right. And so how much do you think you make a year in terms of how many products do you think you make? Do you have any tonnage or... No, I Idea don't. Like I that? mean, we probably make we probably have a hundred different products that okay. we make. Yeah. Between the Union product, the Fantasia, and, and uh, what we call our custom molding for other people. Okay. Uh, there's probably a, at least a hundred different products that we make. That's great. So the future looks good. It does. It it is challenging. Uh, yeah. Costs are constantly going up, so <laughs> it's it's it is a challenge. Yeah. Uh, like I said, they need, these are lower priced products and there's just so much you can get for a product that we right. make like this. Uh, so when the costs keep going up, it is very difficult to, to stay competitive and, mm. and make a profit. But it, it's the business I'm in yeah. and we deal with it. And you're diversifying and so like right different, now it's, different it's, companies and different... Yeah, it, it's, it's good. It's a good business. Hopefully it'll stay a good business. but. You never know what tomorrow no. brings. <laughs> you <Right>. never so, know. <laughs> and I'm at an age now where I'm about ready to retire. Uh, I've been doing it for a long time. I'm 74 years old. Yeah. And you don't know what life brings when you get to that age. <laughs> <laughs> I'm planning your retirement party. We'll, we'll flamingo your yard for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How many flamingos do I need to flamingo uh, your yard, do you suppose? Uh, <laughs> It'll probably be 75. Okay, should I put in an order now? Uh, but a lot of people do that. We get a lot of people that call us and, and tell us what they're doing. They buy the flamingos and, you know, a lot of people see us online and, and they like to talk to us because we make the flamingo. People know the Don Featherstone name uh, and, and when they do call us, they, they request to know, is this the original flamingo? And say, yes, it is. It still has his name on the, on the bird. And... Uh, People are, get all excited about that. It's getting to be quite a collectible on its it all is. of its it own. Is. People are remembering yeah. the history of how what they look like first, and how, some people can tell you by looking at them when they were made and stuff by the way they were made. It's pretty interesting. <laughs> well, it is. I mean, it's a fun business. It's a fun product to make. Uh, it's you know, it's all the planners that we make that go with the Union product line. People like it. Uh, it's just fun They're stuff. They're really neat. They're nice. You got so, some good strawberry pots over there. Yes. Yeah. We make strawberry jars, which was a union product item. Uh -huh. We make the, the penguin that's down below there. Uh, 
<laughs> it's it's a lot of fun stuff. This is great. so it's a fun business. I yeah. like it for that reason. Yeah. You get into more complicated items that we make for other people. It's more technical. It's it's not as much fun. It's it's business, but mm -hmm. the Union product line and the Fantasia line, those are fun things to make. So. Uh, you, now you said uh, over the phone that I talked to you, you, you're currently not making the Flamingo today. No, right? as a matter of fact, I'm only running one machine because we're shut down to do maintenance this week. Okay. Uh, we're transitioning right now to making all the Halloween and Christmas stuff, so before we got into it, uh, I shut down for the week because we just got behind on our maintenance and it had to be done. Uh, I'm only running one item. I, I believe we're running the uh, the Santa the uh, snowman with the penguin, which is a Union product item. I mean, if you want to see that being made, could you're I, welcome could to I film it. a little bit of it while they're making it? Oh yeah, you can film it. <laughs> I, I, I want to film a little bit of this now. When you when you did the pink flamingo, when you're filming it, when you film, when you're actually making it. Do you have any videos on file that I can no. grab a little bit of it? No, I don't. But I, there is Where a first... video online from Union Products of them making it. Okay. I, don't, I, I just wanted like about yeah. a 20 or 30 second clip of it, that's all. I don't have Some it. Some of that's copyrighted and I, I, I have to be careful what I use. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. No, I don't, I don't personally have anything, no. We don't have anything as a company of uh, a video making it. So, so what, I, what, what I could do is I just want to grab a little bit of video of this sure. to put it in on the timeline and then maybe about a 20 or 30 second thing of them doing the mold, a mold of today and then, yeah. then we're pretty it's, much it's the done. snowman with the penguin which is a union product item. And I think what I have Mary do is uh, before we leave go outside in front of the door and, and just talk this is you know maybe going to end it somehow. Oh, yeah. well, look at his little eyes. Yeah. Are his little eyes plastic? They are. And do you make them? No. Nope. Do you buy them and nope. glue them on there, right? Little like googly eyes. Right. Yeah. He's beautiful. He's quite handsome. He's a, he's like a he's like an emperor penguin, but he doesn't have the the, the yellow belly, you know. No. So he's like a just a very large regular penguin with black feet. Now do you, and do you wonderful do you, yellow uh, eyes, bright uh, yellow on, on eyes. On the penguin, do you usually like? Can you pick, turn it this way? Uh, do you have it, the, the, the logo on the, back, on the bottom side of it? The logo and the information? No. Okay. There's nothing. Because I know it's on the Pink Flamingo, you have all that information on the Pink Flamingo. Well, I've got information, you know, because it's in a box. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm looking for, Mary. It says Union Products, Inc. Clemenster, Mass. 01455. Let me zero in there. Hang on a minute. Zeroing in. Okay. Counting 10. Go, go, go. I'm Nine. good. I'm good. Okay, good. <laughs> Look I can it. get he's, you. He's funny. What I can get you I love is him. Uh, a snowman all painted up. That if you want to take yeah. a That'd video of it right now, and then you'll see it being made. Cause okay. It's not painted. Oh, uh, that's not painted. Them. We're just molding them. Yeah. Look at this shell. This is cool pl color plastic. It's like iridescent. So Mary, I'm just letting the camera roll right here. We make a really nice planter. Oh, and look at the goose. Barry, you want to hold that goose up in front of the can? This is a watering can. And he looks like a goose. He looks like an angry goose. The kind that chases the dog. Oh. Right? Honk, honk, like that. Okay. See, his, see his little eyes? They're so cute. I like them because they would sparkle outside if you had an outside. And we have swans. And we have King Kong back there. Oh. Plastic King Kong. Let's see a let's see a purple flamingo. I've never seen a purple one. This is news. This is new to me. Hey, maybe you want, Look see, at him. See, see if we can bring one back for the city of London. Isn't he tonight. beautiful? I like purple. I know, huh? For tonight. Ask him that. Maybe he'll let us have one. <laughs> Can I have a purple one? Is there any chance we can get a purple pink flamingo for the mayor show tonight? And he he looks like they used to make a bank like this, you know? You could put the penny in his hand and he would put the he would put it in his inside.
There they are. Yeah. So apparently we're making some plastic parts for Reebok sneakers. And there are these nice shiny bits. Very nice. He wants to keep going back here. Okay, so we're going to go either the camera He's back cool. over. He's cool. So here we are looking at... A it's a snowman penguin. with a penguin. A snowman with a penguin. With a carrot nose. Uh, that's a Union product item that came when we bought Union product. Uh, goes way, way back as all their products do. And uh, in a little while we're going to go down into the molding room and you'll see it actually being made. I'm going to turn them around so you can get an idea of the intricacy of the production here. It has a light inside, so we have yep. to have a place for the light to be. And it's but the the penguin is molded right into the snowman. And he has, they both have a very jolly smile on their face. We've got the red and the black going. It's really neat. Yeah. All right. Hi. Good, oh, thank you. How are you? Oh, you can be I look at her here. Hi, my name is Mary. Nice to meet you, Veronica. Veronica? Yeah. This is Veronica. What is Veronica doing here? Um, I got it for the snowman. Maybe you play better snowman in the what happens when the pot comes out, there's excess plastic all around it. And that has to yeah. be trimmed off. Yeah. It's very hot. So she's wearing gloves. Right. Okay. Okay. Now she's softening off the edges, making sure that there's no little sharp spots. You want to put it in your house? You want to put it in your house? Bring it to my house? Yeah. <laughs> no thanks, I got one. <laughs> Historical Society and Ron Gerard is here and we've been talking with Claude 
the Sh Chap Delane uh, about Cato products and the pink plastic flamingo that is made under the Union Products name. And there's a Cato Products sign and to go to their website to find out more about them. Have a good day, everybody.